with my dad. Why so early? It's not like the fish are swimming around going, holy mackerel, we're gonna be late for school. No, I think people get up early to go fishing because it takes so long to catch one. But that's because they're going about it all wrong. How can you catch something if you don't chase it? Think about it. A fish is just waiting around to be served a worm on a hook for breakfast? <laughs> well, maybe if it was chocolate. Anyway, my dad says that you need lots of patience to catch a fish, because you've got to be good at sitting down in the same spot for a long time. Hey, so that's what my dad's been doing sitting in front of the TV all these years. He's been training for fishing. even worse upside down, Annie. Oh, joy! Edgar Van Goof is selling his newest masterpiece to my art gallery. Oh, Van Goof's a genius! The father of neo-ultra pedestrianism. What's a Van Goof? That is a Van Goof. You're right. It is pretty goofy. But what could you know about high-class art? You're just a child. Hmm. We know enough to get out of here. <laughs> ah, you've come to deliver my new masterpiece to the McFony Art Galleries. You are no doubt wondering why I'm agreeing to sell this painting, which is like a part of my soul. Not really. I must share it with the world and get the 50,000 bucks. I could show you the new pair of pants. Whatever. He's gonna get a really nice pair of pants for 50,000 smackers. I'm gonna catch the biggest fish ever with my new rod. Wow, I got a bite already. Oh boy, a flying fish. Yahoo! Was some fish. That doesn't look like a fish, but we could use it for a dartboard. A fish is a dartboard? Let's go get some darts. What are those boys hiding? It's just like them to lock their clubhouse when we want to go snooping. So, it's time for the Santa routine. <laughs> painting. Oh. Yuck! This is even worse than a Van Goofy. What do we do now? The boys will know someone sneaked in. I'll just paint a new one. There. Now we better get it back to the clubhouse before the fellers find out it's missing. <laughs> what a mess. I guess Lulu's been... Hey. Wow. Lulu is a real artiste. This should hang in the Louvre. Or better yet, on our refrigerator. But first, I'll fix that rip. Mm -hmm. 
there. It's beautiful. <laughs> Don't lose hope. I'll stop at nothing to find your masterpiece. You... you will? Money is no object. I'll offer a huge reward. Say, 25 bucks. Those girls, that painting, it looks like... Uh-oh, it's that loony from the gallery. Hey, Lulu's the one who burgled our clubhouse. What's the big idea, Lulu, sneaking in and stealing... <laughs> Where did you get that painting? Um, what painting? That painting! There's a reward. Huh? Hey! Hey! Oh, give me that! Oh. Let's go! Yeah. Oh. My boy, I offered a reward, and I, Elmer McPhony, am a man of my word. Here you go. Fifteen dollars. Wow! Congratulations! The hoity-toity of the art world are here to witness the unveiling of your masterpiece. Just because he's a genius doesn't excuse him from wearing pants. It was sure nice of Mr. McPhony to invite us to Van Gogh's unveiling. I didn't know artists wore veils. I now present the latest masterpiece by that genius of the art world, Edgar Van Gogh. But I did not paint this. Oh, Oh, hey, my friend Lulu painted that, and she didn't even need numbers. That means my painting is still missing. <laughs> I'll never get my money. I'll never buy new pants. Don't cry, mister. I know where your painting is. It's next to my mom's shopping list. Your mother is an artistic genius. It runs in the family. My painting! <gasps> Here, Mr. Van Gogh. <laughs> well, at least his masterpiece was good for something. My mother does these amazing exercises with her face in front of the mirror. Because she wants to look younger, she says. Well, I don't know about that, but I think she's forgotten what she always tells me when I make faces. Lulu, if you don't stop, your face will stay that way. Or maybe she does remember, and she's looking for the way she wants her face to stay. <laughs> Ever wonder where babies come from? Well, I decided to find out and ask my mom where I came from. And you know what she said? Go ask your father. <laughs> so I did, and you know what he said? Go ask your mother. I guess they don't remember where I came from. So I asked Tubby, and at least he had an answer. Kinda. He said he's from New Jersey, and how's he supposed to know where I come from? Mrs. Moppet, is Lulu home? Oh, no, no! And a special hello to you, Mr. Moppet. Happy birthday! <gasps> Why, thank you, Tubby. Nice of you to remember. And I hear my little... Lulu? I can't believe it! I forgot Dad's birthday! At least I've got 50 cents, so I can buy him a present. Oops! Fifty cents? You need at least a dollar for a quality present. Phew. I must be able to afford something. Maybe in this swap shop. Like those earrings. Or that hat. Nah. 
about those old roller skates? Hmm. <laughs> Dad's allergic to roller skates. They make him break out in bumps. I know where to get a great present. Gosh, Tubby, thanks. <laughs> the perfect gift. Good old Tubby. I can always count on him. So, what'd you get? Sorry, it started melting. I'm too sad to be mad. I feel sick about this, Lulu. Of course, it could be the ice cream. But I'll make it up to you! Your dad sure has a lot of junk. Hey, this isn't junk. These are all the birthday presents I gave him. Oh, boy, just the thing. Dads love these things. Dad hates fish. He's always grouchy when we have fish for dinner. Dad loves chocolate mousse, though, so I bet he'd like a real one. It's gone. 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 My fish. Big red. He's gone. <laughs> I didn't know he liked it so much. Wait to see Dad's face when I give him his present. Oh. Uh, Lulu, where's the fish? I swapped this moose for it. But my dad's going crazy. I gotta get the fish back. Oh. But what about my dad's present? Ow. I don't know about this, Tubby. Your plan sounds kind of fishy to me. <gasps> Swap? Please, please. Cheer up, Dad. When Mr. Bubbles gets bigger, you can catch him. Thanks, son, but it just won't be the same. <laughs> <gasps> Dear, come quick. Big Red, you've come back. This calls for a celebration. Your dad may be happy, but what about my dad? Now we make a swap. What do you mean you only had one moose? Happy birthday, Dad! Lulu, sweetheart, I thought you'd forgotten your old dad's birthday. Ow! <laughs> it's a genuine, solid iron Civil War cannonball. No kidding, just my luck. Ow! Oh, oh, oh. Everything worked out just fine. Lulu, go! Ah. That's it, Dad. Take the weight off your toe. You deserve it. Huh. Oh. Uh. Ah. Ah. Swap! Say, Tubby. <gasps> Did I ever tell you how I caught Big Red? Oh, no. Ah! It's a long story. First, I put the worm on the hook, but not just any worm. Well, Darn that, worm. Tubby. I've got to put a stop to this. Hey! Hey, Tubby! Hey, Ball! Hiya, fellas. Coming! Sorry, Dad. Gotta go. And then Big Red bit. <laughs> Hey, where's my mitt? Lulu! Wait up, Lulu. You took my mitt and swapped it for that cannonball, didn't you? Tubby, how could you say such a thing? I swapped it for two cannonballs. Now I'm all ready for Dad's next birthday. But my mitt, how do I get it back? Easy. Not that fish again. <laughs> Ever been on a long car trip with your parents? Pretty boring, huh? Like, how much fun can a kid have staring at the back of someone's head for eight hours? But if you've got a kid brother, things can get pretty exciting. First, there's the big fight over who gets the window seat. 
And no matter what your parents say, two kids can still fight over two windows. Or say, Dad, Billy's put his head through the sunroof. And wait to see how long it takes them to realize the car doesn't have a sunroof. Or tell your brother to hit the floor and then ask your parents, how come little Billy didn't get back in the car at the last gas station? Then sit back and enjoy yourself. A long car trip can be fun. About the big bank heist? At 10 o'clock this morning, the first federal bank was robbed. The bank robbers escaped with $10,000. Gosh, bank robbers! Shh! Tabby! Shh! I'm undercover. I'm on lesson three of my detective course, trailing suspicious suspects. You mean the bank robbers? What bank robbers? We repeat, big heist at First Federal. Bank robbers escape with 10,000. Oh boy, a real crime. <gasps> and there's our suspect. Why is he our suspect? Because he's glancing around in a suspicious way. Maybe he's looking both ways before he crosses the street. That's what he wants us to think. Here it is. <clears throat> When suspect has been identified, note details of features, build, and dress. Suspect is a man. Um. Taller than me. Gosh! He just ran into the street at the wrong time. See? Detectives are trained to be very observant. Where'd she go? Come on, that guy is suspicious. <laughs> I'm gonna go in and get his fingerprints with my official detective fingerprint powder. And you're gonna distract him for me. You can get your fingerprints from the door where he pushed it open. Right. Uh, hmm. <laughs> we'll get fresh ones instead. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, mister. Uh, thanks, Sonny. He's going to the park, probably to get some fresh air. He's washing out the taste of all that expensive fingerprint powder he swallowed. He's only pretending to drink. Here it is. Shoes are a good indicator of where a suspect has been. Look closely for dust and mud. Dust and mud? We're looking for bank robbers, not cowboys. I'm going in for a closer look. You distract him again. Ow! Hmm. Huh? Ow! Hey, I don't care why you two are after me. But beat it! We need a hair sample. What? A hair sample. It says here we can match it with one from the scene of the crime. Okay. But I don't know how much hair you lose robbing a bank. I got the hair, and he was reading the newspaper upside down. Come on, he's leaving the park. Oh, boy. 
boy, he's a burglar, too. Give me a boost. Gee, it's so dark, I can't see a thing. Tie him up, Stripes. Okay, but after the sock I gave him, I don't even need him. Yikes! Officer McNabb, oh. quick! Some men are tying somebody up in a house! This house! Right here! Ow! It's all right! Let's go! Shh! Oh, hey! hey! What have we got here? You've got a couple of bank robbers, Officer McNabb. Detective Johnson? What are you doing here? Detective Johnson? I was following this one to their hideout when this one slugged me. But we were following you. Huh? Lulu and Tubby led us to you. Well, I guess I owe you an apology, kids. You two are real detectives. Local kids Lulu Muppet and Tubby Tompkins were presented with special junior detective badges at City Hall oh. today for their part in the capture of two notorious bank robbers. Look, Tubby, it's Detective Johnson. He's following that lady. I've seen her before. Officer McNabb was following her, too. Taxi! There's no escape, ma'am. We've got you covered. Ah, Detective Lulu, Detective Tubby. I'd like you to meet my mother. Last time it rained, I wanted to go to a movie, but my mom was too busy to take me, so she told me to use my imagination and make my own fun. So I skated around the kitchen floor in my socks playing hockey. I had the puck, I took a shot, and broke a jug. And that's when Mom ran in and threw me out of the game. Then I piled up all the pillows and made believe I was a mountain climber. But an avalanche came down and broke a lamp. And that's when Mom ran in and chased me off the mountain. And then I was a spy on a secret mission, and I hid in the closet and yelled, Gotcha! when my mom opened the door. And that's when Mom lost it and took me to that movie. <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs>